Alright fight fans, welcome to Oxygen Gun Control MMA, I'm Dan. Today we're going to be talking a bit, little bit about Chaos Williams versus Michelle Pereira coming up this weekend at UFC Vegas 17. It'll be a very exciting fight, two very exciting fighters. We've got the acrobatic showmanship of Michelle Pereira and the one punch knockout power of Chaos Williams coming in. Alright so first off I'll just talk about uh, Chaos Williams and we'll move on to Michelle Pereira. Piera, Piera, I'm going to call him Pereira for the purposes of this video, pronunciation may be a little off, I'll apologise if that's the case. Okay, so first off, Chaos Williams, uh, he's only had two fights in the UFC, grand total of four, 55 seconds in the cage, so what more can you say about that? Two very impressive knockouts, uh, most recently Abdul Razak Al Hassan, quite the name there. Uh, two leg kicks uh, straight right down the middle and he was out cold so it was very little to say about that one obviously it was very impressive but it was not really a lot to learn from it uh, next up we've got uh, Alex Morono who's also fighting this weekend he's fighting Anthony Pettis former lightweight champion only UFC fighter to appear in a cereal box I'll talk about that one a little bit later I'll talk about that in another video sorry all right, uh, yeah, Jerome Holloway was his last, sorry, Jeremy Holloway was his last proper fight, that was at WXC, uh, before he joined the UFC, I can't remember what it stands for, but it's available on Fight Pass, and they have got some good fighters coming through there, so if anyone would like to go and see that, I would encourage it. Uh, he started off very wild in this one, similar to Brandon Moreno last week, if you know, big overhands, but from very weird angles. I think it's the best way to describe it. Like against uh, Razak Al Hassan, very heavy leg kicks, uh, very strange style. Not necessarily sloppy, but just because it's obviously works, it's obviously got power. It's just unorthodox, is probably a much better term for it. Okay, so this is the first time I managed to see any of his grappling. Obviously, we couldn't see much grappling in his two in his fifty-five seconds in the UFC. So, I always get a little bit reluctant talking about post uh, pre UFC careers because the quality of opponents is in not measurable in the same way it is against other UFC fighters. First thing, though, he uh, yeah, so he got the takedown. He managed to hold him down for about two minutes but he couldn't pass the guard which bothered me and he was trying uh, he was trying to move through to side control from the look of it and he just couldn't get there and then he gave up, let the bloke stand up and we didn't really see much more grappling after that um, as the second round went on the striking was becoming more even they were both landing a lot of big shots uh, Chaos Williams, though, if you had to give it to one of them, he probably got the better of it. He did win a unanimous decision in this one, 30-27, on all judges' scorecards, so they thought he won. He did very well. He starts off very high output, but there's a noticeable drop towards the end of the second round with his output. He uh, just kept looking for the big right by the end of the third round. Didn't have a great deal going, and then with a minute to go, he just put everything he had left into trying to knock the guy out, you know, no, secure, make sure he secured the round at the very least. And he was able to do that quite effectively. All right, so we talked a little bit about Chaos Williams. Uh, another interesting fact, six first round knockouts. He's not been to a third round since that fight. He's only been to a, he has got four decisions on his record though. One submission, which I think was either a guillotine or a rear naked choke. So not a specifically jujitsu based submission there. All right, Michelle Pereira. What can we say about this guy? Anyone seen his fights? He's one of the most entertaining fighters in the UFC by far. Very acrobatic, big showman. Uh, he does all the puts it putting his hands behind his back. Uh, Anderson Silvery sort of showmanship. I'd describe it as, but on a higher level he started off his fight with a flying somersault axe kick 
which is making a statement, if anything. That was in his fight against Zelman Imadayev, Chechen fighter, uh, one of the Ali Abdulaziz guys. This was a great style matchup for Piera, though. He, uh, uh, Zel, sorry, Imadayev is a straight up boxer. He's got little to no ground game, very few kicks, even. He's, I think he would do very well as an actual boxer, though, because that's all he throws. He throws his hands and he throws them well. But Pereira fights from the outside, moving in, big rangy attacks. He'll he'll jump into stuff from well out of striking distance. Superman punches, the Showtime kicks. Worth mentioning, ten ten year anniversary of Anthony Pettis's first Showtime kick. So that's exciting news. He's also fighting at the weekend. Spoke about it a bit earlier. Yeah, but he. Uh, he doesn't have boring fights this guy that's the best thing you can say about him he's a uh, very god I'm struggling to think of a word he, he's, he's a performer as opposed to a fighter he's two and two in the UFC so far but one of those losses was the disqualification against Diego Sanchez for that illegal need to the head if anyone saw that fight and he that was in the third round he was winning that fight well up until that point yeah, it's just going to be a very exciting fight though. It's going to be a matchup between Chaos Williams' power and Michelle Pereira's skill and uh, flexibility, let's say, and variation of his strikes. Okay, we'll do a side-by-side -side now of the various attributes that I like to assign. We've got striking, grappling, fight IQ, chin, and gas tank. Sorry, mine's all over the place today. This video is going to be terrible. All right, so striking, I'm gonna give it to Chaos Williams. Not, please don't take it as me saying Michelle Pierre has got bad striking, because his striking's very good, but he doesn't have the same one punch knockout power that Chaos Williams has by any stretch at all. Okay, grappling's gonna go to Pereira. Again, he doesn't necessarily use it all the time, but he's got he's won a few jiu-jitsu tournaments. Uh, obviously, he's a black belt. I'm not sure how uh, high level those tournaments were that he did win or who he competed against but again the fact he competes in jiu-jitsu tournaments suggests he takes an interest at least Chaos Williams, I've not been able to find a great deal of footage with him grappling and I'm not saying he can't do it but it's clearly not his first choice either so it'd be interesting to see if it does go to the ground okay, Fight IQ Surprisingly on this one, this is one I struggled with most. I'm going for Piero on this one. Purely because, although he does risky stuff and shows himself up, fancy tricks, he doesn't actually get hit that much. I mean, he's only ever been knocked out once in 35 fights. Sorry, 37 fights. He's had two no contests as well. Both those were for missing weight, by the way, which I don't think he's going to have a problem this time. He came in at 169 and a half in his last fight, so he seems to have got this settled. Okay, uh, Chin is going to go to... I think I'm going to have to split it down the middle on this one. Uh, Chaos Williams, never been knocked out. Uh, Michelle Pereira, uh, only been knocked out once. The reason I have to give it a split, though, is because neither fighters... I've not seen either of them get hit with anything huge. I'm sure they've both got very good chins, but until I see more footage of them actually getting hit properly, I'm gonna struggle to uh, come to a more accurate decision on that one. Okay, last up, we've got Gas Tank. I'm going with Piero on this one, purely because of his athleticism. He's surprisingly big for their weight class, well to weight they fight at. He's very athletic, you know, big, six pack I'm not accusing him of being on PEDs but if he popped in on a USADA test I would not be surprised at all he looks like he's sculpted out of stone he's uh yeah he's gone to the third round a lot more than Chaos Williams has recently though so I'm sure it's going to be a very interesting fight but I think if it goes a bit further into it that Chaos say that Piero does, will have the advantage after a second or third round as I say, in the only three-round fight I've watched of Kers Williams, 
he did seem to fade a bit in the third round okay now it's time for my pick I'm going for Chaos Williams on this one and I'm not as confident as I'd like to be he's a uh, evens for the win so plus 100 uh, plus 156 to 4 for the stoppage and 13 to 2 plus 6, 650 for the decision I'm going to go for stoppage I don't think he'll win a decision and with it being a 650 neither to be odds makers either but his last two fights he was a plus 270 against Alex Morono and a plus 180 against uh, Al Hassan so and he knocked both of those two guys out in 30 seconds Piero's coming in at a one, minus 125 for the win plus 165 for the stoppage and plus 350 for the decision but I just can't sleep on uh, Chaos Williams knockout power on this one so that's going to be my pick alright uh, this is probably going to be the only video for today so we'll see you tomorrow where we'll be talking about Jeff Neal versus uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson that's our main event I'm also thinking about doing some in-depth uh, profiles on the fighters just doing a whole video talking about each fighter this will probably be for event headliners that are coming up a week or two before the event just so everyone can get a bit of background on them leading into fight week right so that's going to wrap us up for today you've been watching octagon control mma i'm dan hope everyone has a great night and we'll see you tomorrow